Now we are ready to start proving Pythagoras' theorem itself. In order to do that, I'm going to do this uh, rather than through pictures, I'm going to use a physical model of this uh, particular occasion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bit of paper here and I'm going to create a triangle by just cutting off a corner. Now obviously this here is going to be the right angle in the triangle and the triangle is going to be something along those lines. That's what I'm going to create. But a little trick up my sleeve. Now, this is a right angle triangle. There's your right angle. This angle I'm going to call alpha and that one I'm going to call beta. Also, I'm going to call that side C, that side B, and this one A. So, there's your triangle. Okay, have a good look. Because I folded this piece of paper in four before I cut it out. So what I actually ended up cutting out is four identical triangles. Now remember, in my previous video, I showed that each triangle, the angles of each triangle add up to 180. Now this here is a right angle, which is 90 degrees. So that means that for these two angles, all that's left is another 90 degrees. So angles alpha and beta add up to 90. And that is something very interesting. Because, of course, in this triangle here, which is an identical couple, copy, that's also alpha, that's also beta. This is also alpha, this is also beta, this is also alpha, and this is also beta. And now I'm going to do something tricky. Well, if alpha and beta add up to 90, then if we stick two triangles together like this, they make up a 90 degree angle right there. And we can do this again and again. Do it there. And we'll do it there. And what have we got when we do that? A lovely square. This is a square. Now remember, this side, the long side of the triangle, has a length C. This side here has a length B and that one has a length A. But therefore, this length here is also A. This one is also A. This one is also A. And this one is also A. That one's B, that one's B, that one's B, and that one's B. Okay. The area of the big triangle is, of course, C squared, because that's the length of the hypotenuse, the diagonal side of this triangle. Also, if we look at the area of a triangle, which is my first video I did, it's half the height times the base, which is half times A times B. And there's four of them, so that adds up to two times A times B. That's the area of these four triangles, is two times A times B. But let's look at this little triangle here. What can, or this little square here, sorry. What can we say about this square? Well, look very, very carefully. And what do you see? Well, this here has a length of B. 
that here has a length of A. So this bit here is B minus A. So the area of this, tri of this square here is B minus A, a squared. And what is B minus A squared? Well, that's A squared minus 2AB minus B squared. Now, the area of the big square is obviously the area of the four triangles plus the area of the little square. The area of the little square is A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. The area of the four triangles is 2AB and add them together. The 2AB cancels out with the minus 2AB and what's left is a squared plus b squared. We already knew that the area was c squared, so c squared therefore equals a squared plus b squared. And that is Pythagoras' theorem. Thank you.